How you guys doing? Hashimala Holler Entertainment. We're right here on the Harvey Gamage. We're out on the way, set to sail. So we're gonna give you guys a chance to see them as they start to raise the main. And then we're gonna interview some of the um, crew members and our students that are on board.
was something wrong with the block or something. It was coming up real hard, even though there's so much stuff. When some you lose some. I think that went pretty well. That's well. That's 
It's kind of an exciting time. Yeah. we be tacking through. Nice. Happy? How's it going? Yeah, how's it going for you? Oh, I love sailing. Nice, so nice, happy. nice. You're happy, nice. Yep. Guys are almost secure, ready to go? Yeah, just go about. Go into tack mode. Nice. Yeah, we will be at some point. Oh, look, we're all the way, all the way over here. Yeah. Look at where we were. Tunnel vision. Want to try a Valentine on the, on the jib halyard? Yeah, this is awesome. Is that Cockles, the lighthouse? No, that's Burnt Island. That's which one? Burnt Island. Burnt? Yeah. Burnt. Okay. So I guess I should explain a little bit more about what's going on. So we just got all sail set. Now we're gonna go and interview this cat. Just going back to the helm. Final adjustments and tweaks, and then we'll catch up with Sarah and Will and Malik.
stands ready for captain's order. Captain is doing his navigate by paying attention to where he's going. And when he gives the order, they are going to come about. The captain now is here watching the wind. to win as we turn. We're going to shift the sails, reposition it, catch more wind, and again to propel the ship forward. This is called the art of sailing. That is well. That's the topping lift. Yeah, here, let's haul on that a little bit. Yep, we can. Alright, now put that on the tin. Keep, the, keep your hands far away from the pen. Remember to palm it. But it's a two handed operation. Are you lefty? Okay, that's cool. So, so here, uh, Alright, so use your right hand. Use your right hand to move the line, and then your left hand to palm it, just like that. And you do that whenever you're taking a line on or off. Yep, you got it. 
Brilliant. And we do three turns up and down, and then we do one underneath and pull tight. Perfection. That's exactly it. Yep. And then we coil this up. We don't we don't leave it like that. And so we always start right up here. We always coil clockwise because that's the way the line is laid. And so you just, you gotta you gotta twist it a little bit with your fingers. And it comes into a nice coil. And then, wait, that's not all. So you grab this, give it a twist, yeah, that's put it right there, and then it's nearly stowed. Coiled more extension cords. <laughs> I hate coiling extension cords. Oh my god, it's the worst. They don't act like rope. I'd rather do an extension cord. Yeah. <laughs> or like garden hoses. Oh, garden hoses are the worst. They hate them. You gotta do the half inch back of the Sarah, have you been have you been home in a while? Um, I saw the solar panels. Oh, I see you. Oh my gosh, no, she's going landscaping. She's going wow. She has right now. She has crazy. She has professional landscaping. I know. I'm so proud of her and for getting her garden, master the garden thing. And then the wine, the wine barn. The wine barn. The wine barn. Yeah. How's it going? My dad's got the Good. yucky thing down. What time is it? So what did you get out of this? It is 1105. 1105. I need to check. Ah, I can't speak. What do you do? A lot. What, do, what is a lot? What does that mean? I learned how to do the sheets. <laughs> so what was the sort of like, besides the actual technical, um, paying attention, and listening to calls. Paying attention, listening. Attention to detail. Yeah. Transferable skills in life and social oh, yeah. presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think you can uh, transfer those same skill sets as you improve on them and build on them to become a better student. More proficient in your skill sets that make you a more what, valuable employee or maybe an employer as you build your own business. Yeah. An employer, so you've already said it. You're gonna be your own business person. Yeah, you said don't try, be it. That's so. true. All right, I'm here we go. It. That's right. You tell me about me. That's right. If we don't try, we do, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's our our, our theme here. That's our our guts. That's our moral fiber. <laughs> holler at your table. Right? We don't try, we do. Yeah. So you're learning some team building things. You see the importance of how it is for people to work together. Oh yeah. Yeah. What do you think about that when it comes to working as a team? It's better than working alone. Is it just better than working alone, or do you realize that someone's going to have to get the orders? Someone needs to. Yeah, you need a team on a boat. You need a team on a boat. Or a ship. How about a team on shore, on life, or a team in a job, a team in school yeah do you think it takes a team when you're in school the administrators are putting forth an agenda for the educators the educators are, cr are, cr are crafting curriculum then they have to get the curriculum out to the students and then the students need to work as a team in order to make it a, a conducive classroom for learning yeah right so if students work as a team, not doing things to distract other students and paying attention to what's going on. You think that'll be a better learning environment? Yeah, it'll be a better one. Yeah. So you think the skills that you learn here makes you a better student? Yeah. Hmm? And a better person. And a better person. Awesome. So this is your first time out on a on the oh, you're out on the ocean. Any boat. On any boat, huh? Nothing around you. Oh, there's another sailor. There's a sailor going by, right? Is, that's, that's called, that's a sailboat. I've seen that up here. There's nothing around you, buddy. So you had to talk to other students and what, so far what you're gaining from this, what do you think? Is it enjoyable? Is it hard work? It's nice. What's going it's on? It's not hard at all. It's not hard at all? Mm -hmm. All right. You think you're coming back with us next summer? Yeah. Right? Possibly this summer. If I can. Well. This summer, then we continue our training, right? Yeah. The next summer, when you come back, you'll actually be a peer leader, not a team leader, but a peer leader. Yeah. Which means that you'll be like what Will and Sarah's doing right now in the ship, right? That'll be fun. You'll be like first mate. Because right? then, when you're on board the ship, you'll be showing some students what to do, and you'll be taking the lead, right? Yeah, that'll be fun.
They're blowing the horn, so we're out on the water. That was a horn? So, that was a horn. That was the weakest horn I've ever heard. <laughs> but it's matching what's going on with the with the lighthouse, right? Mm -hmm. So it might sound weak, but it's at a pitch that carries. Right? Hey. So, uh, have you equated this experience to what we did when we was on the train, on the narrow gauge, when we was on the the locomotive. Mm -hmm. See the importance. So if you got the conductor working with the engineer, the engineer is running the train, but the conductor is making sure that the engineer keeps things together. Yeah, yeah. Do you see the same correlation in the skill set between the captain, the first mate, yeah. second mate, and the rest of the crew? Oh yeah. Yeah. We got Sarah over here, maybe we can grab her for a minute. Okay. Yeah. You're going to do Will next? Yeah, and then we're going to do Will. So we're just talking to Malik about his experience. Maybe we should introduce you, Miss Sarah. Hey, how's it going? Uh, cool. So you want to give your full day? We're actually live. Oh, really? Yeah, we are. Oh, wow. Uh, hi, people. Uh, <laughs> My name is Sarah Weinberg from Jamestown, Rhode Island. I've been living in Maine for seven years. I guess uh, first time I was on a boat, I was six weeks old, and uh, sailing, sailing, and teaching are my passions in life. Nice, nice. That's what I do. So, Sarah, you came here from a program that Malik goes, that Malik is going to be heading to that uh, Thursday, yeah, tomorrow, I think. Is he gonna, starting tomorrow? Yeah, he's oh, starting that's so tomorrow. Exciting. Uh, where he's going to be out on the J boats, but Sail Maine, um, big shout out to them. But you're here in the Harvey Garment, so why don't you tell us about your capacity here? So, wait for the foghorn, it's going to be yeah. two more blasts. Hang yep, on. Yep, absolutely. So, that's something that we were just talking with Malik, and um, we want to share with our viewers that there's actually a language that we're out here on the ocean so we can communicate without being on the radio. So there's these horns going on. Maybe yep. we can start by talking about what the blast of the far horns symbolize. Absolutely. So because we are a sailing vessel that is under sail, we are one prolonged blast, which is four to, four to six seconds, and then two short. Other boats that are doing other things are gonna have a different sign. For instance, a tug with a tow behind is one prolonged blast and then three short blasts. That's a really important thing to know because if you've got a tug over here, and there's a cable under the water in between the tug and what it's towing. So you want to know when there's a tug with a tow behind Absolutely. coming around because you don't want to run over that cable. That'll mess your day right up. Yes, it will. Get caught up in your all kinds of caddy wampus, as yeah. we say up here in Maine. Yeah, and no I good. like that. Caddy wampus. Caddy wampus, yep. So we got Will walking by. We got to grab him next. Yep. But um, so your capacity here at sale uh, at Harvey Garmage is going to be. Harvey Garmage. Ah, uh, so I am the program director. I'm the person who's responsible for putting together educational programs on board. Uh, I'm also a mate, medical officer, cook, event coordinator, chauffeur, and uh, general person around. Wow. Is there any other titles we can throw at? You? Uh, yes, a uh, weapons specialist. We I oh, have, that's right. Yeah, You're now I've, the I've just been learning how to fire the ca cannoneer. So that's my newest. That's my newest. Nice. Uh, I, I have a, my aunt is telling me to say that I'm an officer. Oh. <laughs> on board. Auntie, thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, oh, I'm also the ship's diver as well. Oh, are you? I am. Nice. Yep. So you're a licensed scuba diver. I am. I am a certified dive master. And I have I have all my uh, paperwork for my hundred ton master's captain's license near Coastal Mate. I just need to submit it. Nice. So I so, passed the test for that this year, which was cool. So head of educational programs. Hopefully you're bringing us on board with this and Love our to make students. Love that happen. That would be wonderful. Yeah, sail some students up from New York and Connecticut. Well, they'll sail themselves. Today. I'll just put them on the boat. Nice. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. Awesome. So what do you think that students would get out of being on doing such a thing, Sam? Well, I can't say what each individual would get out of it, but I can tell you what I get out of this kind of work. Because this, this work is my life and it's the most fun thing that I can do. I always felt in school like I was, um, you know, always being asked to sit still or to quiet down or to like stop running around and to, you know, chill out. But I've never really been a chill person. So being on a boat gives me an opportunity to like both think with my brain and with my hands at the same time. And so it's really physical. You end, I mean, you work. Right. But at the same time, you have to think about everything that you're doing from navigating to cutting the anchor to raising the sails. 
you have to know what you're doing. One of the most rewarding things about working on one of these boats is working with a crew. Um, the, the fellows that I was in Cuba with and I, uh, you know, we've got we got a special crew bond, and uh, that when you when you're when you're on a boat, you can't leave. Right. You, it's, you're fully engaged. Like you are there. You can't be anywhere else. And we don't we don't allow when we're running educational programming, we will not have cell phones or anything like that on board. So really gives people a chance to be completely present in their lives and for themselves and with their peers, which is, I think, something that we lack in the education system today. Right. You know, we're not going to show you, like, movies on a projector. Like, you're just going to live it. You're just going to do it. Right. And it's, it's um, for me, the ocean, the ocean has always been the closest thing I've had to a religion. So for me, it's, like, almost spiritual to be this close to the water right. and to, to, to get the chance to interact with it because there's nothing that I love more in the world than going to sea because it is so much fun and requires so much of you and I love I love something that asks that much right. nothing else asks that much but you can give it and you find these boundaries you didn't even know that you had you know and you're like whoa that was weird and then you push past it and there's always another one and you're always pushing past it and it's so challenging it's so much fun nice it's nice to see you passionate about this. oh i love it you mean i could talk about it forever it's my favorite thing in the world so what do you want to tell us about the harvey garbage and the opportunities that lay forth ahead well students on board are gonna they're gonna participate completely in the life of the ship so what that means is everybody stands a watch, they steer the boat, they uh, they do boat checks, which means you look in the bilge and make sure everything's uh, copacetic down there. Uh, you steer, you navigate, you learn about celestial navigation, uh, you learn how to take bearings, you learn um, about the wind, how weather works, which is one of my favorite things. Love talking about the weather. I think it's not, it's, you know, a very, very uh, underappreciated topic of conversation among landsmen. Meteorological sciences are underappreciated. I, 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 I love talking about the weather nice. and being able to read the clouds, I mean, it's like magic. I mean, like just the other day, I was like, oh, look at those mare's tails. We're going to get, we're going to get rain and socked in within 12 to 24 hours. It was, I was totally right. right. I mean, it wasn't, I was right. I just know how to read the clouds because I'm a sailor. But like anybody can do that. It's not something that I can just do. Anybody can do any of this stuff, which is why it's cool. You don't need to be. You mean you need some training, but you don't need to be a professional. Anybody can do this, which is why it's fun. So it sounds like most of the things you're passionate about and love and love to talk about are some of the things that you hear me always getting on Malik is paying attention with most of our students, and it takes in what you mentioned when you was in school. You couldn't sit still, but here you can't run, so you learn to develop social skills, to become more cognitively developed, totally. and start to control your own thoughts, emotions, and stay in control, and start to relate those skills where they're transfer transferable to like, I don't know, life experiences, professional experiences. Everything. Nice, very good. It's very transferable. All the skills that you learn on board are transferable. You know, maybe not celestial navigation. You know, you're not going to get a job like. Uh, you know, celestially navigating for anybody. However, the skills that it teaches you on the side, that kind of diligence, that kind of perseverance, that kind of fortitude to like, to make it through some of that math. And like also, you know, just the, in, the endurance and the, the closeness, like how to really work with the team, all those things are really applicable to outside. So I have to laugh a little bit because, you know, as a submariner in our U.S. nautical mar uh, naval services, I have to say that learning celestial navigation is transferable. And I think Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson is laughing at us because you can become an astrological physicist learning how to read the skies. That's right? true. An astronomer true. learning how to read the skies. And those are pretty good paying occupations. <laughs> Those are <laughs> make more than I will. <laughs> Tell you what. <laughs> so we're, sure. we're going to grab Will if he's around. I'm um, looking for him. Let's see. Yeah, he's wandered off him. again. I think he's bailed on me. He's seen me coming. Right. He's, he's a little camera shy. Yeah, we're going to grab him, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't know where he is. Well, thank you so much for your time. And yeah. I hope that. All you folks that I can't see on the other side of the phone, have a have a real nice day, and can't wait to meet you and have you come sailing with us next year. Awesome. Thanks. Take Thank care. you.
So again, we've got the uh, foghorn going through. See if I can search wheel out. How you guys doing? Nice. So wait a minute, crew, 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 right? We got three crew, right? Yeah, well, we should talk to you guys about what's your experience. How's your experience been here so far? It's good. Yeah. Damage has always been good to me. So. Nice. How long you been aboard? Uh, I just, this is my brother, and we just got on uh, yesterday just to help with this, but okay. I've sailed on damage a bunch of times prior. Nice. You guys are part of Ocean Classrooms, right? I was. Yeah, you I was? was? No. You wasn't? Okay. Nice, nice. How about yourself? I was in Ocean Classrooms. You was in Ocean Classrooms? Yeah, I was, nice. that was the last trip. Me and the so you guys was on the Cuba ship? No, we were before that. Okay. Nice. On the real trip. On the real trip. <laughs> when you had to get out there and do it, huh? Yeah. Nice, nice. How you feeling? Good. Yeah? <laughs> so I'm let you guys socialize and uh, I'm going to pull us off of social media and close down the curtain. You want to sign off? Is it peace? <laughs> All right, so thank you guys for watching with us. Um, you know, I do see Will aboard, so we're going to grab Will before we shut down, have you speak with the first mate, and maybe we can get the cap in, and then um, you guys understand the value of what this type of program does for education, the development of cognitive skills that comes forth. There's a lot of um, skills that are picked up behind students that uh, most people don't get out of these type of programs. Part of paying attention to detail, being able to follow orders, listening, um, being very attentive visually. Um, and I'm going to show you guys that the fog that we're in. So this is the fog. So our vision is very limited. You'll see the whole crew. So we got Cap, first mate. And there steering and navigating the boat. Very tentative of what's going on. So you heard Sarah speak about navigational skills and this is what's going on right now. Being familiar with the landscape, if you're unfamiliar with the landscape, there are Buoys and items that are in the water placed by the U.S. Coast Guard and throughout the world, um, different nautical marit uh, maritime services that um, make sure that there's safe navigation going on. So, I'm going to see if I can sneak in and grab a word from uh, Captain JV and, and maybe not. Head that high. Cool. I think you're hitting right for the island at that rate. Not according to that. Right. So, Kath is actually watching what's going on in the GPS place. Right where you are. Yeah, she's not a winter person. As high as you want to go. Right, what are you hiding there? We're worried about 15. So, what they're doing is they're reading the wind through the flags. As the flags wave, you can view what's going on with the wind, currents of the wind. Uh oh, and Malik is taking the helm. So, wow, Malik has got a chance to actually drive the boat. Malik is steering us on the boat. So let's see if we can get to 160. So it's pretty light right now, which means you'll need to give her some steerage. So. Oh, nice. And then you see her start to respond. But then the other younger sister, Padley. Come back up. So. Over to the starboard beam. Swirl out. Let's give you guys can see way up through here. If you see the dark. So you see water, a little lightness, that's fog, another dark stretch, then lightness. So that's land, stretch of land in there. So Malik is actually steering the ship. All right, sorry about that guys, now we're back. So, um, all right, let's get a feel of this.
That's half. If you can stay with somebody, maybe try something else. Captain JV, can we grab a quick word with you? Yeah. Well, you're running again? That's a great way to be able to exercise. <laughs> I just got to go. All right. Exactly. I guess it's a little hard to get a work yeah. visa for Australia, though. Hmm? For a long term work visa. Over your Maybe a few months. Zero, which one would you turn the wheel? Do easily. Right. Very good. I'm not saying that, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> good. Good. I'm too close here. Right now, we're sailing by the wind. We're looking at those flags. They give us an idea of which way the wind's blowing. And we can actually steer okay. a little bit higher. We can come to light. 165, come right to the new course of 165. Right. I'd like to try to sail. We almost went one out of the boat now. That's right. Jump your neck. When you get there, it's going to take a little while to get there. So don't put a whole lot of it. Once you start seeing it move, that's going to be a good thing. Just before you get there, take what you're doing there off. It does. Well, we're going so slow. Remember, the rudder is feeling the water going by it. It doesn't do anything like water is going by the rudder. Right? There's not a whole lot of. We're going a little over a knot, which is like less than two miles an hour. You could walk a lot faster. Yep. So we were there about a little over three weeks. So there's not a whole lot of water going by the rudder right now, which is hard to steer. If you guys don't, to show you guys the GPS, but then there's also a compass right here. Yeah. I'm trying to get it to 165 and it like stays put. So what you're reading is the compass? Yeah. I think the, the yellow line, right? Yep, that's called the lubber line. That one right in front of it. That's what you use to steer with. Okay. Now yeah. we got the wind has shifted a little bit off, so now you can't go to 165. See how the flags are? They're yeah. More, yeah. coming a little I bet. bit more this way. Mm -hmm. So we might have to actually go the opposite way. At, at least his grandfather gave him a chance to try. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is that, 165? Yeah, yeah. One, six, when you're at 155 right now, which is okay because mm -hmm. the wind shifted a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So as you guys grab some wind, I'm going to grab Will for hey two minutes. Hey, yep. Will. How's it going? How's it going? Uh, well, well, I'm doing well. Why can't you just introduce yourself to the public here? Okay. Yeah, so I'm one of the mates on board this here, Harvey Gamage. Uh, I'm you also the just chief one of the engineer. mates. You're the first mate, aren't you? First mate, yeah. All right. That's yeah, an so important position, isn't it? Yeah, I am directly underneath the captain, and it's my job to make sure that whatever he orders is executed. Nice. Which is why they have me doing what I do now. Okay. Yeah. So when you speak about engineering skills, how did you acquire those? I went to a boat building school called the Landing School okay. down in Arundel, Maine. <laughs> and I did the Marine Systems course there. Uh, my second year, I did wooden boat building. So, <laughs> so those, those two uh, majors really... Uh, really pay off on a boat like this, a big wooden boat with engines. Nice. Yeah. Um, but I've always been interested in boats. 
so. Okay. Yeah. So you was like speaking to a youth and asking, you know, trying to just maybe not even get them interested, but telling them how your experience in high school um, helped you to be to where you're at now. What would, how would you correlate that? If I was talking to a youth? Yeah. What you are. Well. We're live. <laughs> <laughs> I would tell them, uh, you know, this, uh, my, my experiences, I guess, uh, have always really been a test. And on okay. a boat like this, uh, sometimes failure is really not an option. Uh, safety is always a concern, and people can get hurt. So all my knowledge goes forth into what I call a success, which is getting this boat from point A to point B. Um, and, you know, applying yourself in any field, you should always kind of be as gung-ho about it as that. that you're gonna do your best on the highest level you possibly can. Great. Yeah, I guess does that answer? No. Well, <laughs> well, put it this way. If, uh, should they feel like, oh, I failed this test, my life is over, or do they think like, or would you say, hey, you stick in there and keep going? Right? Oh, yeah. Yep. So you don't have to be an A student to be where you're at today. No, not at all. In fact, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the D students that actually come out on top a lot of the time. Okay. The outside thinkers are the people who look at tests and sometimes think they're silly. Okay. But that's just me, of course, you know. School is important. <laughs> School is important. It's actually, yeah, school is really important. You really do need a foundation, uh, an educational foundation for like what you are interested in. You right. Know? So, so I'm sure math helped you get through. Oh yeah, your... yeah. No, math, math uh, on a boat is incredibly important. You know, um, knowing the rate at which you're traveling, you know, time versus speed. Correct. Um, and, you know, you look around, I mean, there's geometry everywhere. Sail making is huge geometry. Absolutely. Um, there's also a lot of physics involved, especially um, with engineering. You know, knowing, knowing how this stuff really holds together is important, and having a good understanding keeps it together. Correct. Um, yeah, I mean, I can think of this morning I was doing... Uh, some light algebra, uh, trying to figure out the volume of a container that we were going to store liquid in. Right. And of course, there are no right angles on a boat like this. Everything is curved, you know. Right. So you can't just do like a very basic multiplication. Everything is more complicated. Absolutely. But well, we know the foundation of algebra actually starts in our fractions, right? Get yeah. us to the point that we understand numerators, denominators, and then we get into the, the, the sciences of division, and you know, but you know, people get afraid afraid of those things, right? right? So it seems like as you were speaking to us, she wasn't like the A plus student graduating with honors, right? Right. But here you are, first mate on a how how so how long is this vessel? So she's 131 feet overall. That's from the end of her boom to the end of her bowsprit. She's 94 feet on deck. She's uh, 114 tons of wood and iron and canvas, um, 21 feet wide, and 10 feet of her are underwater. Nice. So, you know, you can do some pretty basic uh, mathematics figuring out if you can get through a channel or not. There it is. And if you do that math wrong, well, then you're stuck on the rocks. <laughs> So in reality, some of those things might be life or death. They can be, yeah. yeah. You know, a uh, decision that you make based on your math can, can really get you in a pickle if it's wrong. Right. You know, if, if you're making a, a transatlantic passage and you say, okay, we have X amount of water and we have X amount of people. So these amount of people can drink three gallons a day and we'll be fine. You know, if you don't do those numbers right, you might be 400 miles off with no water. Right. Which happens, you know, it's surprising that the, that thing, you know, that happens a lot. Right. So we like to we like to tell our students that we transfer those skills to like what we call social skill sets, right? So you're thinking about, ah, oh, buddy is gonna go, ah, oh, we're gonna go see a concert, and right. you know, you got five people in the car, but 
what's going on, you know, and the next thing you know, you're pulled over and oh, things yeah. can get in trouble, right? Because people just don't pay attention to a lot of things. Right. right? Well, well, if you're on a boat like this, attention to detail is extremely important. Right. Um, and I mean, as you see, raising these sails is all a huge coordination of effort. Okay. Um, and just organizing everyone to be in the right place at the right time and having enough people doing things. Right. So, and that, I mean, that translates into life all the time, you know, even a basic social setting, like wanting to hang out with your friends, you know? Right. You know, you, you tell one friend, oh, we're gonna be here, and your other friends say, well, let's go there, and then you blow two of your friends off, it just becomes disorganized. Okay. And then being on a boat, locked on water, with a lot of folks that maybe you don't know, you got different people, different backgrounds, different ethnicities, you sort of get rid of all those superficial things and you learn to build a social skill set to become a team, right? Oh yeah, yeah. The bond between sailors is incredibly strong. Right. And when you're, you know, 131 foot boat seems big, but it's pretty small when you're living with people 24 seven. Right. You can't go off into a park or something, you know? Um, it's community living, really, you know, right. people are responsible not only for things on deck, but dishes, right. toilets, you know, cleaning up after themselves, and for me it was a pretty interesting experience, because I've never really done anything like that, okay. I didn't really go to like, you know, summer camps or things like that, I've kind of always been on my own, so being locked with nine other people for three months, was, was kind of interesting, nice. but you know, I count a lot of those people now as like my, my best friends awesome. after being through really amazing things like amazing sunsets off of Cuba, but also being up at two in the morning trying to bring down a sail in a hurricane and just being soaked and cold and tired, so. That's a challenge. Yeah, and everybody needs to be working together at the, the highest level to accomplish those things. That's awesome. Yeah, so. Well, I really appreciate this because I know this is somewhat of a challenge for you. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, Sarah's the real, she's the talker. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, you got it. You did yeah. a great job. Thank I'll keep you. keep the boat floating. Awesome. All right. But what are you doing up there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hanging out? Yeah. Nice. You got a password? So how's it going, man? Okay. So you're literally staring at us, huh? You're gonna run off the ground? I hope not. No, I mean, no. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. You're not gonna do that? No. All right. Well, you should be talking to me then, huh? We're actually gonna sign out now, so we're gonna go off. I'm gonna say peace to everybody. Adios. So again, we thank you guys very much for joining us on this live broadcast. Um, I interview Cap a lot, so I'm not gonna try to corner him. Um, we'll get him when we get to shore. And uh, we thank you guys for joining us on this live broadcast, Holler Entertainment, um, as we build our new uh, curriculum for summer 2017, where we're gonna pretty much um, bring together both our aquaculture program and our experiential, outdoor experiential um, learning programs and uh, create one new curriculum over next summer for next summer um, and Malik is actually here becoming one of our first peer leaders for that program with that we're gonna say peace enjoy uh well, actually we should get to give a shout out to his hometown so Malik you want to say where you're from Connecticut yep. where about New Haven New Haven what school you go to Amity Amity so shout out to the people at Amity Amity High School Big shout out to Amity High School. Big shout out to New Haven, Connecticut. And uh, that's it. Peace. Adios. Adios.